Most of the countries in the world have normal bilateral relations with Cuba. Why is the U.S. virtually alone in its hostility toward Cuba? What explains U.S. policy? Let me just report again some truisms that you would f read all over the front pages of the newspapers if, they, if there was any commitment to trying to tell important and uncontroversial truths. There's nothing I'm going to say that's in the least controversial. Uh, but let me just run, let's run through the history because it's interesting. Cuba was the first foreign policy problem for the United States. It goes back to the 1820s. This is no new thing. Uh, back in the 1820s, the nice guys like Thomas Jefferson and so on, uh, who were planning to take over the hemisphere, you know, uh, saw Cuba as the next place to pick up. Okay, they'd already stolen Florida from its inhabitants, claiming to have taken it from the Spanish, but actually from its inhabitants. And their eyes were now kind of moving toward the west, but also on Cuba. That was the next uh, prize. Well, there was a little problem. The British fleet, you know. Uh, there was a British deterrent, just as in the 1960s there was a Soviet deterrent. And in fact, the British were the hated enemy in those days. Uh, mainly because of their power. They were preventing the United States from expanding, like they prevented the United States from conquering Canada a couple of times, which the U.S. has been trying to do since 1775 and may have finally achieved in the so-called free trade agreement. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, <laughs> Cuba was sitting right there, you know, it's a valuable place. He couldn't get there because the British are in the way. Uh, John Quincy Adams, I guess it was, suggested that we just be patient. He said it'll drop into our hands like a ripe fruit by the laws of political gravitation, okay? Meaning, by the time we get stronger and the British get weaker, we'll, things will shift around, we'll be able to take it over, okay? By the end of the century, that had happened. By the end of the century, the British were sort of being pushed out of the game, the United States was getting more powerful, uh, and during something that is sort of ludicrously mistitled the Spanish-American War, the United States intervened in Cuba primarily to prevent it from liberating itself from Spain. You take a close look. That's an interpretation, so you want to make sure, you know, don't take my word for it. But I think if you look, you'll find that what happened is that the intervention in Cuba was primarily an effort to make sure that its liberation from Spain didn't mean liberation. And in fact, Cuba was quickly turned into an American plantation uh, with all kind of restrictions on its options and, you know, bought up by, uh, American agribusiness and so on and so forth. Uh, when Cuba tried any funny ideas about be moving towards independence, it was smashed down. For example, Franklin Roosevelt is famous for the good neighbor policy. We don't intervene anymore in the affairs of our neighbors. Well, take a look at 1934 uh, when Cuba made the mistake of trying to elect a a sort of, I guess, moderate social democrat of more or less independent ideas as president. Uh-uh, that's going too far. Okay, so out. Uh, the, uh, uh, and that, so it continues up through 1959. Okay, 1959, Castro comes along. Uh, there was a little bit of toying with the question of whether we can in court maintain the new Cuba in our system or not. And this is not a new policy issue. Remember, it's back to the 1820s, hasn't changed much. Within a couple of months, it was decided that Castro is too big for his britches. There's no Russians, incidentally. He's anti-communist, you know. In fact, he was jailing members of the Communist Party. There was no question of the Russians or the communists or any of this kind of stuff. Uh, by late 1959, uh, U.S. planes were already bombing Cuba from Florida bases. The State Department claims they didn't know about it. You know, yeah, sure. Okay, but I mean, try, try that if, say, Cuban planes bombed the United States, you know, and say, well, okay, the Cubans didn't know about it. Okay, so, but it was happening. Uh, by, in March 1960, uh, the Eisenhower administration made a formal decision. It's now, it was secret, but now it's declassified, so you can find out about it. They made the formal decision to overthrow the Cuban government and take it over. Okay, that's March 1960. Remember. No Cold War, no Russians, no communists, just independent Cuba. From that point on, March 1960, up until today, Cuba has been subjected to extensive international <coughs> terrorism, economic strangulation, uh, 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 without an end. Uh, and it's not trivial stuff. Uh, just to give you one small example, 
this one comes from an absolutely impeccable source, Raymond Garthoff, who's a very conservative and respected historian, right inside the CIA and the intelligence apparatus now, writes historical work on all this stuff. Take a look at his books on reflections on the missile crisis, which he's writing sort of partially from the inside, partly from as a historian. Well, there's a little item in there somewhere where he's at the peak of the missile crisis, you know, at before it, you know, when it had sort of theoretically been solved, but it was still was not over. So like the missiles were still there. At the peak of the missile crisis, one of the, uh, oper one of the mongoose teams, these terrorist teams that uh, Kennedy had sent into Cuba to smash the place up, uh, one of them, which was apparently acting out of control at the time, like there's no evidence that Kennedy had ordered it to do this, but uh, so maybe it was on its own, but one of them blew up a petrochemical plant in Cuba, which according to him, he, sa he doesn't verify it, but he says it's alleged and he apparently takes it seriously that 400 workers were killed. Well, yeah, suppose uh, Cuba blew up a factory in the United States and 400 people were killed. Do you think it might make the newspaper? Uh, in fact, they'd probably be nuked. We'd nuke them, you know. Okay, but this is us. Uh, and this is incidentally one tiny footnote to a long history of terrorism. Uh, and this was right at the peak of the missile crisis when I, for all I know, Cuba had its fingers on the missiles. I don't know that. But anyway, somebody did. Okay, now try to just, for those of you who want to know about why people believe what they do, just just do a little check and find out how much information you can find out about this, okay? I mean, I've told you, that I'll save you the trouble. This is it, I've repeated it in probably 20 times in books that nobody would dream of looking at or reviewing and so on. But that's one little item. And then it goes on to poisoning crops and livestock and shooting down fishing boats and uh, strafing hotels and you know, blowing up airplanes and all sorts of things. Meanwhile, the economic strangulation goes on. Okay, permanently.